This episode of On the Line is presented to you by Living.Fit, your one stop for all your fitness needs. Make sure you go download the app Living.Fit today. Now here's the show. Welcome to On the Line. Today is Friday, July 8th. We're back. Kind of forgot that <laughs> July 4th was on a Monday, so kind of threw off our schedule. But now we're back to the normal normal proceedings until about Labor Day. But hey, we might be doing that on Tuesday anyway. But uh, we got Treshawn Gore on the show today. Uh, a lot of proclamations by him. Kind of uh, said some things, kind of clarified some things that he said in the past. It was a fun interview, though. Uh, we're on the same page. We're Team Treshawn for, uh, for the rest of the time. Uh, but anyway, we got him. We got our UFC Vegas 58 preview in two minutes or less. I got our winners and losers for the week. No medals this week, just winners and losers. Just some bonuses. Uh, so uh, without further ado, uh, before we head on to Treshawn Gore, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Listen on Apple, Spotify, Deezer, Stitcher, or any podcasting platform. Hit that follow. Maybe leave your review if you're one of the cool kids. But without further ado, here is the man himself, Treshawn Gore. We are joined by a very special guest. He's the best fisherman in the entire UFC. We are joined yeah. by UFC middleweight Treshawn Gore. Or my man, how we doing? I'm good, man. How you doing? Feeling, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Love to have you on. So I was gonna ask how Atlanta's treating you, but you're back in South Carolina. Have you officially? Did you move down to Atlanta? Yeah, I moved to Atlanta. Yep. Officially, officially moved the whole fam down there. Not just like you going down there for camp. It's I've the been whole... there for like five, six years now. At really? ACC team oh, yeah, that's America right, top, that's right. Best gym in the world, soon to be American top ten team Lima. Damn right, damn right. I've gotten used to living in the city yet. I know you're a country boy. Man, I love I, I love Atlanta, man. I, I don't really live in the uh, city of Atlanta. I live in Norcross. Okay. I lived all over Atlanta. I lived in East Atlanta, like where Gucci man from. Then then I moved to Snellville, and now I'm in uh, Norcross. Okay, uh, okay. I, I like Atlanta. I really moved there for my dreams, though. I didn't move there because the scenery. I moved there because that's where like the best training camp for me was, was at the moment exactly exactly i mean you gotta you gotta take those steps gotta go where it takes the best for the career but i know you also went out uh you went out to Phoenix. you went out to arizona trained with a couple different camps out there to beat uh t-city brian ortega invite you out there no he's your coach man i i saw t-city i went out there i talked to him you know we dapped it up we uh it's, there's still a bunch of love there but i went up there to uh help canon prepare for his fight with uh izzy and i got to spar him multiple times i got to spar uh eric anders uh, I I was I got to talk to O'Malley a little bit and uh, actually I saw him a good bit, man. You know, like we trained side by side, like it was pretty dope up there. And I feel different. I feel a lot different from my last fight. I feel more awake. I feel more agile. So I feel a lot more confident too. Going up against those kinds of guys, going up against like veterans like Anders, going against the guy who might be champion. Just just me, I also Benson Henderson too. Sparring yeah. Benson Henderson. Uh, but like it just showed me, bro, that I belong. Like I did great with those guys. I'm not gonna say what happened, but I did good. I did really good. I showed myself I'm, I'm on the. I showed myself like I'm on the top of the food chain, uh, in in that trip, and uh, I believe that even in my camp back at home at America Top Team, I just been able to spar my brother, uh, Douglas, Douglas Lima, because he's in camp for a fight too. I didn't have him in my last camp. I only fought, I only sparred him once. I didn't really have the best camp, but this camp right here, I feel like was a lot more like better. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna continue to do the thing where you kind of go back? So like, obviously, Cannon brought you up to prepare for Izzy, but do you kind of like this idea of like going from camp to camp and kind of getting different looks from different guys before you go into your fight? I want to be the best on the planet, man. Like I truly do. Like, and whatever I have to do to get there. I'm going to do it. So my next plan after this, after winning this fight is Thailand. Thailand, Thailand, Thailand. Team Bomacek, uh, Team Phuket, Tiger Muay Thai. Uh, I'm going to all the best of the best gyms for like three, four months. And I just want to commit my life to just, to my craft. You know, I don't want to talk about everything I'm going to do. I want to do it. I want to, I want to spar the best on the daily. I want to put my body through grueling things and, get myself to, to a level that I haven't seen yet. I believe I'm more than capable of beating anybody in my division, including Cody. Uh, and I believe I, I have the capabilities to be champion. I just have to just take one fight at a time, man. So I ain't even going to talk about the belt right now. Talk about I was going to ask. 
Yeah, I was going to ask if you kind of regret a little bit saying triple champ status before the first fight, but it seems like you're nah, not more focused no, on... No, I don't. On... No, no, don't regret I never it? regret that. No, I don't regret saying that I want to be double champ. That Because I don't care what people say, man. That's been my goal since I was, like, 10. Like, like, like people act like, oh, I'm just up here trying to put on an act, dude. Like, nah, that's been my goal to be the best from, from, from the beginning of starting mixed martial arts. So, I mean, like... My mindset, I just shoot for the stars. I shoot I shoot for the as high as I possibly can go. I'm not going to come here and waste time and just try to be a UFC fighter just on the roster. I don't want to just be a raw, on the roster fighter. I want to be the guy, the man. I've been wanting to be the man. But, yeah, you damn right. I mean, yeah, I got picked that. People, oh, he's going to be double ch- talking about double champ. He lost his first fight. Who cares, bro? If you go look, If you go look at that fight, I damn, I caused all the damage. I pushed the pace. I stayed in Brian's face. I just didn't throw like I should have. So that's all it is to it. You live and learn, man. But damn right, I still do want to be double champ. I just realized I got to work a lot damn harder. And I got to I gotta be smarter with my IQ. I can't just be in there searching for one big punch. I got to go in there and I got to use my IQ. I know one thing too, like I've talked to guys who have lost their zero and it's like a big thing a lot of guys say is like there's you can you learn more from losses than you do from wins because you see things you need to work on. You don't have this kind of idea of invincibility and going and defeated in MMA is like arguably one of the hardest things you can do like in literally any sport. It's fucking hard. Habib did it yeah. and he's literally like the only one. John Jones, asterisk, whatever. But regardless, it's one of the hardest things to do. And you talked about kind of in that fight against Gilbert, uh, you go to any other judges, like, you know, judges have been super inconsistent. Like, shit, I mean, you, one weekend you could have won. The next weekend, it could have been a loss. You don't know. That's kind of the crazy shit it is with the judges now. That's really how it is. That really that really is how it is, bro. Like, I like I know Brian threw more in the first round because I let him, filling him out, trying to find the perfect punch. But, like, if you go back and look at that fight, I caused the damage. I took him down and was on top. He grabbed me a lot of the time and didn't do anything in the clinches. And he didn't do anything. He didn't. He didn't damage me at all on the feet. None of the strikes he hit me with were significant. All my strikes were significant. So it is what it is. I'm moving forward, man. I, I, my my focus is on is on Brundage and uh and and going in there and putting on an absolute showcase performance. And uh, so that's what, what I'm going to do. I, I have one last question about Brian, real quick, because I know like you guys are boys, and then all of a sudden leading up to the fight, he starts talking a little bit of shit, looking down on you a little bit. Were you kind of surprised by that? Going into like, I mean, obviously it's a fight game. You gotta have confidence that you're gonna beat the other guy. I mean, but was there part of you that's like, why shit. I went in there. That's why I kind of fought emotional because, like, I I was like, damn, bro, like, I'm showing you all this respect, saying you like, oh, stop, because I was telling everybody stop calling him the fake Ultimate Fighter because the dude like, he he showed up, he showed up when I got injured, I, and and then out of nowhere I see him saying that he's burying me and all this, which he's not, <laughs> which is why he went moved to welterweight. Well, that's why he moved to welterweight. You know, if he was so like confident that he was so much better than me, he would have stayed at that, that weight class and continued to try to dominate. But he felt he felt something hit him that was more powerful than what he wanted. So he moved down, bro. And that's no disrespect. Like, hey, man, man, God, you know what? God forgive me for even talking like that, because I shouldn't be like I shouldn't be bitter in any kind of way. But I do feel like I won off damage, and I do feel like yeah. It threw me off him talking trash like that. That's why I was like, oh, I'm going to knock your ass out. Instead of just going in there and, and just, like, kicking and, and, like, being me. Like, like, just being loose, being agile. I went in there and I was trying to land a perfect punch on him. I was so trying that's... to land that perfect punch that just, that walk-off KO. But you can't do that. You can't do that. You have to be busy from the start of the bell to the end of the bell. And so that's one of the things I was going to ask about is like, obviously it's a lot easier said than done to be a lot more, you know, active in the octagon. Like say, maybe you're waiting for the perfect punch and like sometimes a mental thing. Do you think you prepared enough? Like we're like, how, how do you change that from maybe like being a little too patient to being maybe, how do you like balance it out from not being either too patient to being maybe too unpatient when you get in there? Well, man, I've been working uh, extensively on just letting my hands go and uh, every punch I'm, I'm going to throw in 12 days isn't going to be like devastating p- punches to put them out but i will throw stuff to set it up and i'm going to be different i'm going to be strategic in there and uh i'm going to be aggressive everywhere even in the grappling apartment i'm going to show these people that i know how to wrestle and grapple too i'm a brown butt on the ground i started off in brazil in bjj first and i feel like 
like really all my amateur wins come from submission and or come from like just out grappling the guy but i like to knock people out i like to like i like that that's that's my forte i like to like land on somebody and time somebody and put them out but i mean i can i know how to grapple too and that's what i feel like i need to show in this fight that i got levels to my to my game you know so i, I can't talk bro the guy's a decent fighter i'm fighting he's a good fighter to get where he's at, seven and two. I ain't looking past him at all. I'm not looking past him, but I'm not losing the game, man. I'm glad I, I'm glad I, 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 I lost by that one, about literally one point. I'm glad I did because, like, I realized, yeah, if you got fighters like Khabib, yeah, you got fighters like Jones, but like, are they really considered like the goats? Like, really, the goats are like Anderson Silva, uh, freaking people like uh. GSP, uh, Max, Max Holloway, yeah, like because yeah. Max came from nothing. Uh, you got Charles Oliveira who almost got cut, and now he's bossing up on everybody. To me, those are like the true, true, like goats because they like took their L's and they came back stronger and and made like a name for themselves like no other. But hell yeah, Khabib's one of them too. He's he's incredible. Uh, freaking Jones, he's like one of my favorite fighters. But I mean, shoot, man. I, I'm, I, I mean, even Usman, he got choked out before. He took a loss. So I mean, man, it's not the end of my career. It's mm-hmm. not the end of my career. So that's why you're not gonna hear me like sit there and hunker down and go change my Instagram from future pound to pound. To, oh, hopeful, hopeful up and comer. Hopefully, keep my nah, man. I'm gonna keep that same energy that I've been having for freaking ten years. I've been telling my coaches I'm gonna be the best since for ten years. I came from a little country in the woods state, like Little River, South Carolina. Nobody in my state has made it out. And I've been telling people I'm going to be the best of all time. And I I just got to keep working, man. Got to keep working. I got to keep gotta working. Work. Exactly. That's it. That's the work. that's the mindset all champions have. And even look at Glover Teixeira, another guy. I feel like a lot of the champions right now are a lot of guys that just either get cut or went through a ton of adversity throughout their careers and eventually became champions. We have like four of them right now. It's kind of nuts when you look at it. It is. It's very nuts, bro. And I feel like that fight made me more hungry because it made me realize that, like, like what you work for can be gone in 15 minutes. That's true. Like, it made me realize, like, like the shit you work for can literally be gone. In, like, the first round, I'm like, man, I'm going to fill this guy out. I'm going I'm to I'm get him eventually. Second round, I got him a couple times. And, like, third round, I, I didn't pull it like I should have pulled it. And it's like, I went back and I had a moment of realization and I looked at my bank account and I'm like, dude, it could be an extra 50K in here. And on top of that, more respect on my name. And on top of that, like, it could be like so much more on here, but just because I didn't go in here and throw more punches than what I should have, my baby has to, has to suffer. My wife has to suffer. And that made me realize the realization of like, dude, like, (laughs) this is real. Like you have to, like it may, it just made me it woke me up and it made me realize that like when you get him hurt you gotta you gotta pour it on and when I get this dude hurt bro he will not survive. I'm, gonna, go for I'm the- gonna go in. There. I'm gonna be mean meaner than I've ever been in, in any fight. And that's all it is to it, bro. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. I know you kind of talked about. I know I've listened to some other interviews. You talked about it is mixed martial arts. It's not just boxing, not just kickboxing. And this guy's kind of come out and said, you know, you haven't really been. Your wrestling out of South Carolina isn't really known for its best, but I feel like, and he says, like, you just been training with the Limas. Well, you just went to, you went to Arizona, trained with a bunch of high class grapplers and wrestlers. He's going to figure out, man. He'll figure <laughs> out, like, that I know how to grapple. He'll figure it out. Like, because if you if you look at all my fights that you watch, you, you've seen me go against good grapplers like Gilbert, who chokes people out, a rider who's a good college wrestler who trained with the Olympic team. Uh, you see me go against Andre, who you see, who you see kind of breaks people and hearts it out and does good in fights. Like, and you've never seen not one of them put me on my ass and hold me down because I'm not, I, I'm usually in a defensive posture. Like, oh, let me defend this and get it back to the middle. I'm tired of that, man. I got more than that, and that's what I'm going to show. He wants to try to take me down. He better be willing to fight off his back, too. Is there a part of you that I wants mean, to like I, just be an offensive grappler and kind of show like, yeah, I can do this shit too. I'm not just like a, I'm not just like a guy who just, I, just a big muscular dude who strikes. Yeah, yeah, it is. I do, I do, bro. Because, like, but at the same time, I'm not like, 
I don't I don't care where it goes. I'm a mixed martial artist, and I'm re- I'm prepared for him to I'm prepared for him to try to grapple me, and I'm and I'm prepared to also uh I'm prepared for anything he tries to bring, man. And like I'm just gonna be in there and be well rounded. That's the difference in this fight. Last fight I wasn't well rounded, but I just went in there like and I had moments where I did good, like where I would kick him in the head and it would rattle his body and stuff, or like when I would like throw my hooks or I would throw a jab or I would throw a leg kick, but I have moments of goodness in there, but I wasn't being well-rounded. So, I mean, that's, I feel like that's the difference in this fight. I'm going to fight, like, I'm going to fight well-rounded. I'm going to use, I'm going to use my tools that I have. I didn't use my tools in my last fight. If you go look at that third round, I took Brian down pretty easily. If I would have did that in the, in the first round or second and, I just didn't want to grapple though. I didn't want to. I was just thinking in the, in, the, in my mind, oh, the fans don't like that. Let me do what the fans like. And then those same fans that I was trying to impress by knocking them out, down me, talk shit about me. So it's like I went in there like, oh no, nah, I'm not gonna grapple because they don't like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna get the fans what they want. I'm gonna get the fans to show. I'm gonna put them to sleep. And uh, still ended up getting clowned at the end of the day. See, as a fan, uh, I, I I'm very I'll always say this: fuck the fans. You gotta you gotta take care of the family. Gotta take care of the. Gotta t- I mean, obviously you want to entertain and I, the fans. And I realize, time, and though, I realize that yeah. now. I realize that now, bro. Like you can't like just to go in there trying to put a show on for the fans. You gotta do it. They ever hell wins the fight. Mm-hmm. Even if it, even if it looks like boring to the outside eye, you gotta do what you gotta do to get that W. So I mean, that's what I realize. And uh, yeah, man, thank you for thank you for calling me and. Uh, Giving me the shot on your your your, uh, your show and just some exposure for my up and coming fight, but I look forward to this man. I look forward to displaying my skills. Yeah. Well, there, wait. Are you? Do you have to go? No, I'm good. Oh, I thought you the way you described that. I thought it's like, oh, I gotta no, go. I was I, like, I was just, oh. I, was just, I was just thanking you for having me, man. Oh no, dude! I love having you on. Love having you on. No, so like, and that's other again, like again, like maybe first round you go for the fan friendly stuff. Then if it doesn't go your way, then you're like, all right, fuck everyone. I'm just gonna go for the win. Take care of my family because as you said, if you look at the bank account, it's completely different than it would have been if you went for something maybe a little less fan friendly. And that's just at the end of the day, that's the only thing that matters is that bank account and how your family's affected by it. Exactly, bro. Exactly. But uh, sometimes the people on Twitter, the social media warriors, they don't, uh, they don't necessarily agree with you on that. So they I do want to ask, bro. They're telling- they're telling me, oh, where's my God at and stuff when I and I lost by decision. I mean, let's be real, man. That fight could have went either way. We've seen we've seen more bullshit decisions like over the past couple months than we've ever seen. And that fight literally could have went my way. Like I, I I'm just being honest. It could have. I mean, yeah, the guy threw threw stuff. Yeah, he threw more, but did it did it land on me flush? Did it did it did it damage my body? Did did he take me? Did he do anything with the clinch he was giving? I mean, that's all I'm saying. We ain't talked about that. That fight happened like four months ago, bro. I, my, I already got a blemish on my record now, so I'm moving forward, bro. It happened. But hell yeah, I I, I, uh, I look forward to going in there and shaking that bad feeling off, though. Because it's definitely... I felt suicidal, man. Damn, I felt like suicidal when I went back to the hotel room because I realized the realization started kicking in. Cause it's like it wasn't in, it was a kick in in the fight, but it's like when I got out, I realized like the realization started sinking in. That's the part that none of these. That's the part that like these guys who go on there and like try to troll you on Twitter, Instagram, all that other kind of stuff. That's what they don't see in you guys, like in you fighters. Is like when you lose a fight like that, where they get knocked out, lose by finish, regardless. Like you guys feel terrible after the fight. Like you guys are already like not only is your bank account empty, you lost, and you just kind of feel like shit because you lost. You let down some people, and you're like. Fuck, dude, and then you get these dipshits like uh, eggless guys on Twitter, guys stop profile pictures on Instagram, just sending you spam in your DMs, telling you you're a bomb, yeah, things exactly. like that, which is bullshit putting because like clowns, they don't even show their face. Putting clowns and all that, putting clown <laughs> emojis and and just saying this and saying that and attacking my wife and attacking my son, and saying the things that like nobody in real life would say to you, and it like. Like, at first, I would, like, let it bother me, but then I realized, like, dude, these people are on my profile. I'm not on their shit. They're on my profile. Like, they made a profile to 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 harass me. So, obviously, I'm doing something right to come from the sticks of Little River to have these people randomly want to come and say hateful shit to me. So, it is what it is, man. I wish Brian Battle the best in this upcoming fight. 
I wish him the best in his career. He just better stay away from me, man, in the future. That's all I'm going to say. I already asked for a rematch the day after uh, in his inbox to him and his coach, and they they said they're moving forward with whatever the UFC gives them, uh, and that's cool. It is what it is. I asked for a rematch. I said, there's people that feel like I, I won because I, I damaged you more, and there's people that feel like you won because you threw by them, and uh, they move forward. So I'm moving forward, too. I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm ready to oh. just go on here, man, and just and just display my skills and be diverse. I'm gonna be diverse. In there. I'm gonna be loose. I'm gonna be loose, man. I'm gonna be so loose and diverse in there. He's not gonna be able to catch my timing because I'm too fast for him. Way too fast for him. I was gonna say too, if you don't have haters, are you really that good at what you do? I've always said this. Like, if you don't, if you have haters, that means you you must be doing something right. Because that must mean, you know, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for exactly. Sure, but I, I, it is what it is. I love them, bro. I love all the people that even hate on me, bro. Like, they can hate on me all they want, bro. But honestly, I hope that they are happy, man, with their lives. And I hope that, you know, that they that they have joy in their lives, you know. I don't have no hate toward nobody, bro. They can hate me. They can say whatever they want to say about me. But I love them, bro. And I would be the first person that would pray for those people that say stuff about me. See, I love God, man. And, like, I know I'm not perfect. I cuss and stuff. But, like... I'm literally the person that would pray for them if they wanted to put a bullet in their head. So they could talk about me all they want. They could say what all they want. But they're going to see this little country boy go out there and get that belt one day, starting with this fight. Damn right. That's all it is to it. Damn right. Damn right. So I just out of curiosity, there's a lot of different ways of getting to the UFC and things like that. And you went about the way of the ultimate fighter. Um, and kind of, you know, it was kind of a crazy situation, things like that. And like, obviously I know you've said in the past, like you were asked to be back, if you were to do it all over again, you do it again, but looking at a thing like a D contender series and things like that, is there a part, like if you were to go over and do it again, if you had to choose between the ultimate fighter in a one fight contract on the contender series, like what, which, which one would you rather go with? I go with both, man. I, I don't care either way, anything to get me here. I got here like with three, five, I was three and no going on the show. If you really look at my record now, I'm five and one. If you consider, if you if you look at my exhibition fights, I'm five and one. Yeah, those should, those should be counting. Like I don't know why they don't count those fights. It's I think they bullshit. should count. It's a pro fight. It's a pro yeah. fight. We we fight in front of Dana. We fight like it is what it is though. But if you look at my record, I'm five and one, and uh, like my only loss is by one point and could have went either way. So I mean not bad like i don't have a horrible resume but at the same time <laughs> i don't have what i want either i don't i don't I, the people don't think i'm that guy they don't think i'm that guy until they see that i'm that guy like they're gonna have to they don't they ain't gonna have no choice but to respect my name bro because i'm gonna make people respect my name bro and whatever What's... i throw at, at, at this dude whatever i hit him with bro whatever i time him with he ain't taking it Got our mind I'm gonna right, I'm gonna punch right dead through his head, bro. It ain't gonna be like, oh me. You gonna see, bro? I'm gonna punch dead through his shit. I see any openings, I'm gonna utilize. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump on it. I just don't see him making it out of this fight with me. Not with my mindset right now. I feel relentless. I feel like when people grapple me, I'm in their shit the whole time, like. Even in Arizona, I did I did good against wrestlers out there, man. Like, and I was out of shape. I was two twenty five up there, big as hell, coming off of getting like stabbed in the back of my leg. I got I didn't tell anybody, but I uh, got impaled by like a branch. I was walking down a piece of uh, I was walking down a, a hill while I was fishing, and I uh I, I, was, I this happened like three or four months ago, and I uh fell on this branch that was like like that was like this long as my finger and it stabbed me in the back of my leg right below my butt and i had to get like three or four stitches and after, and after i got those stitches i still had pieces of wood coming out my leg like months later when i went Jesus. to arizona i pulled out i pulled out a fat piece of wood out of my leg in arizona and that was the last piece of wood that it passed and then it closed completely so i was out of shape coming off an injury going to arizona but i got in shape real quick going eric anders and going with like all the wrestlers he had in his camp, and then going over to the, the MMA lab and going Cannoneer, Benson Henderson, all those guys, it forced me to get in shape because they weren't holding back on me. They were trying to beat my ass. Wait for you to get back. Get a lot of phone calls. 
Yeah, man. I t- I literally just told my wife I'm in an interview. She's still blowing me up. Well, well, hopefully everything's all right. Uh, yeah, I was saying, I love Eric Anders. Is he one of the funniest guys you've ever uh, trained with? He's cool, man. He's a cool guy. Uh, I don't really talk to him much, but the, the, the time I did spend with him was cool. And Cannoneer was very uh, informational. He gave me a lot of, you know, information and stuff and things I need to do in my career. And he was very helpful. I feel like... I felt it kind of like he tried to, he was kind of like mentor trying to mentor me in a way, you know. And I, uh, I, I take it. I just, I respect him, man. I believe uh, he has all the capabilities of beating uh, of beating the easy. And if he don't, I know I can, man. I know I have the explosiveness, the speed, the agility, and also the technique. And I'm also 28 years old, so all those feints and all the fancy things you see him doing, I can do it better. So I, I feel like that's why that trip to Thailand is necessary. I feel like once I put the transform to what I'm envisioning in my mind. But right now, Cody is the next focus. I'm not looking past him. Um, he's gonna come in there and he's gonna shoot from the start of the bell to the end. But I just feel like I, I just feel like man, like when as soon as I touch him, he's gonna try to shoot on me. And uh. I just don't think he's – I don't see him keeping that wrestling that wrestling uh, up because when he feels like my defense and when he feels me wrestling him back and putting him on his back, like he's going to abandon, like, grappling real quick because he's going to be like, damn, this guy knows how to grapple too. And then, boom, he's going to be stuck on the feet with me. And I don't see him making it on the feet with me. So, all this too, man. I'm just tired of fucking talking about what I'm going to do to this guy, bro. I'm ready to get in there. <laughs> I'm ready to just get in there and let him feel me, bro. That's all it is. Ready well, to we get can... in there and let him feel it. I'm excited for it, man. I'm excited for it. I, I believe say, in you, man. He's I talking, believe in he's you. Talking. Well, thank you, bro. Thank you. I I appreciate you reaching out to me. I just I want to be the best, bro. I don't know why I want to be the best. I don't know why. But I've been wanting to be the best ever since I was 10 years old, bro. I just want to be the best. I do. I don't know why. I don't know why, but. You know, like, you ever, we ever just get these jitters and these feelings of butterflies that just stand up on you and stuff, like, and you feel like you're destined to do something? Yeah. Like, and I know you get all these UFC fighters and fighters that say, oh, I'm I'm destined for this. Like, but, bro, like, I come from nothing. I come from a mother that's, that's addicted to crack cocaine, a father that is a dope dealer, never did nothing. I come from a town where nobody does nothing but either sell dope or fall into the rat race. And it's like, or either game, or even game banging and shit like that. And it's like, I just randomly just started having these thoughts of just, oh, mom, can I get it? Can I get a heavy bag? Ten years old, eleven years old. Mom, can I get a boxing gloves? Can I get a uh, twenty pound weight? Like it's like I, I, it's like I was just walking around punching the air hard as I can. I had no man in sight teaching me how to fight. And it's like I knew I had to teach myself, so I would be walking down the street punch in the air as hard as I possibly can because I would imagine somebody trying me and I would always tell myself if I hit them with this, they ain't taking it. And that was when I was 11, 10, 12 years old. And I found myself fighting fighting men, fighting grown men for my mother when she would fight them. And it's like, I feel like I'm destined to be great. And like everybody's like, oh, like why is he so... Why is he doing that? Why is he saying all this? Oh, he wants to be double champ, man. Everybody everybody talks about it, bro, but, like, my family don't got nothing. And I want to be that guy to change from them eating bologna sandwiches and oodles and noodles and shit to caviar, lobster, wagyu, A5 wagyu, the best, the best of the best. I want my grandma to leave this earth without a worry in the planet. And I want to buy her any house she wants because she deserves that. I want to put my mother in the best rehab facility on the planet. And I want to I want to go to these same countries that the champion Izzy is, is is from. And I want to build man-made lakes and fill them with fish. Fill them with fish. Build huge man-made lakes like Lake Lanier. And fill up with fish that climate. And I want to help stop the starvation that's going on in the world. 
So, bro, I got things I stand for that's great. I, I don't just, I don't just get up out of bed and just feel like, oh, I, I, I'm the shit and my shit don't sing. No, bro, I just want to be the best, bro. Man, I, I don't understand why, but maybe I'm crazy. But I'll We're tell you crazy. one thing. We're all crazy. I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one thing, bro. I'm gonna just keep my faith in God, cause I feel like He's the reason why I even think the way I do. And uh, he's the reason why I'm, I'm going for it. I don't even know why I'm getting emotional, but I've never, like, told nobody these things. But honestly, bro, I feel it in my soul that I'm going to be great and I'm going to be champion one day. So, I mean, I just have to just fight. I have to just, ah, man. I have to just go, just do what I got to do. I'm going to just stop talking because talk. I'm talking too much. I'm not <laughs> no, dude. Like I'm ready to run through a brick wall. Like I've got, like I mean, I've already, I already thought you were gonna. I always thought you were gonna be a contender, potential champion. All this stuff. I'm now, I'm all on board. I'm all on the train, all aboard the train. Yeah, it's and the thing is too is like you want to do it not just for like you don't want to do it for like the girls, the money, the fame. You want to do it because you want to like better the world. You want to better your family. You're doing it for better things and like you know just like things that don't really matter. Yeah, I do, bro. I want to better the world and I want to like. I want my name to be seen in it as, as the best. I want to be right beside Bruce Lee. I want to be right beside, uh, you know, Mike. I, don't, I want to be better than Tyson. Honest, to be real with you, uh, to be to be quite honest with you, I want to be better than Mike Tyson because when he when he fought his major fights, he got knocked out. He lost. He knocked out the main. He knocked out like the people that weren't like known like that. I don't want to just knock out the unknown guys. I want to go up there and knock out all the best. Cody's one of the best. He's a good fighter. He's seven and two. He won more than he lost. I want to knock him out. And uh, my goal is to put everybody to sleep that I fight from here on out. And my nickname is about to change from Mr. Vicious to Treshawn Moore Gore Gore, because Ooh. because my name stands for violence. My name stands for bloodshed. And I feel like I need to embrace that. So if they want more gore, I'm gonna give it to them. I was going to say, I feel like you got, like, the perfect name for a fighter, a core. Like, that's, like, the perfect, like, last name for a combat athlete. I know, man. It's... Another little, little oh. sign that, like, maybe there's, like, there is something more to it than just, like, wanting to be the best. Like, you have the name for it. You got the calling. got the little, got the butterflies, you know. Uh, yeah, bro. I always, I always, like, I don't, I don't ever, I never even thought about my last name until everybody's been mentioning it, like. When me and Brian were fighting, everybody's like, bro, they got the perfect last names for like Battle fighting. and Gore. <laughs> battle and Battle and Gore. Cause, cause if, if you uh if you look at it, he may have won the battle, but I won the war. And I and I brought the I brought all the gore in that fight. So That's I mean true. it is what it is. But I but uh I think this is time to do it, bro. I'm I, I can't I can't say anything else. There's nothing I can say that's gonna convince myself or convince Cody or convince their team that I'm serious. The only thing that's gonna convince them is when they when they step in there with me and they realize that they're outmatched. That's all you can do. Gotta go in there and knock him out. Just gotta get the results. I'm not gonna force it. I'm not gonna force nothing. I'm not forcing nothing. I'm gonna just go in there and I'm going for the win. You damn right I'm gonna be looking to knock him out the whole time, but I'm not gonna go in there. Like just purely searching to to knock him out, but you're damn right. I'm, I, I see any openings. He gives me any openings. I feel like I hit harder than that African guy he fought last. But I don't know if the dude was African or not. But all I know is he was a big, strong black dude. He was like five eight. And to be real, I feel like I'm more meaner. Than, I feel like I hit more concussive than that. I I do. I, I I no disrespect, but like when he had Cody hurt, he was just like arm punching them, bro. Like when I get him. I feel like when I get him hurt, like, I'm going to be punching, like, through him. You know what I mean? Like, he's going to – when he get hit, he's going to have to go unconscious with the way I'm hitting. So, I'm not going to go in there and arm hit him. I'm going to actually hit him. So, it is what it is, bro. I'm sick of being slept on. And then, man, I've talked too much. I feel like I've talked too much this interview. But I feel like I need to let out some of my feelings because I'm sick of these bastards telling me to, to stop talking like I'm talking and stop thinking like I'm thinking. Because they, they weren't with me when I was in the trenches. They weren't with me when I was down. They weren't with me when I was sleeping in that fucking car in the middle of winter, 25 degrees outside, begging my wife to leave me. She wouldn't leave my side. They weren't with me when I had these dreams in me. They weren't with me when I took a Greyhound to Georgia at 20 years old. 
and, and, and got the taxi to take me to the American top team at three o'clock in the morning. Had the address in. Taxi driver was like, you sure you want me to drop you off here? I was like, man, I guess you could take me to a hotel. But I had in my mind that that's where I was going to go. My family's calling me, Trey, why did you go to the big city by yourself? You didn't tell nobody. Because I'm going to be great, Grandma. I'm going to spoil you one day. I never told nobody none of that shit. But, yeah, I've been going after my stuff hard, bro. Like, I came down here at 20 by myself to try to make it work. I failed. I went broke. I had to come back with my wife. I came up with my wife years later. We still struggled our ass off. Now we finally are in a gated community with a baby boy. After sleeping in the car and sleeping on blow up mattresses and sleeping in hotels and sleeping in storage rooms and renting out rooms and going through hell. Just believing in one crazy far fetched dream that, that, I, that I try to make everybody believe. And now out of nowhere, I just get a shot at the ultimate fighter. And then not only do I get on the Ultimate Fighter, but I dominate, I display pure great talent there. And I know it wasn't my best performances, but damn it, I did better than a lot of these guys on this on this tough season now. So I mean to to, to be real, bro, maybe I'm crazy, bro, but I tell you what, my dreams, I'm gonna keep my dreams big and larger than they could possibly be. And I ain't about to drop them for nothing. And you should chase your dreams too, bro, as hard as you possibly can. And don't and don't let nobody like discourage you from from being great or being some or being something different, being being a trendsetter. You should go out there, bro, and like like you're working for Living Fit right now, bro. You freaking own all your own stuff and, and like multiple six, seven different lines of income, bro. Go out there and boss up on them boys. No matter who doubts you, you should go out to your dreams too. Cause I'm damn sure gonna go out to mine. So that's it, bro. Sorry. I ain't going to say nothing. You got me running around through a brick wall, dude. You, like, I'm going to let you're... you ask questions. I'm going to let you ask questions. I'm going to just be quiet now. No, no, you're fine, dude. Like, it's like your story, like, really, at the end of the day, like, the only ending that makes sense is a championship. Because, like, you, you as you said, like, I mean, I've heard of, I've heard of the story. Like, like, you've been through the shitter and you've made it to the UFC. Like, this isn't – you're not just going to go 0-3 in the UFC and get out. Like, that's not how this book ends. That's not how the movie ends. It's, like, it's, your life is literally – not, It's not. No, and there's so many it's fucking not. people out there who will be like, everyone's like, oh, my life's a movie. Your life literally is a movie because, like, movies don't have everything be nice and happy. You have to go through, there has it to doesn't. be, like, you know, rising plot, things like that. You have to go through shit. You're like me, bro. You're like me. You're like me because you're you're young, but, like, you always had in your mind, there's more out there in the world. I got to go do more. I got to go be more. I don't want to be average. I want to be different. Bro, that, that feeling that you got is God calling you for your purpose. Like, just like me, I got that same feeling. Like, I used to, like, walk down the road from playing basketball at middle school with my friends, and, like, I would see all these people getting in at, like, 5 o'clock, and I'm like, man, I don't want a regular – I don't want to work that, that regular 9 to 5. I don't want that regular little-ass $200,000 house. I don't want to be average. I always had that in my mind ever since I was a kid. So, no. For that question you asked me earlier, do I regret saying I'm going to be pound for pound? No. Do I feel like – I, like, do I feel like I oversold my dreams to the world trying to make other people believe what I believe? Yeah, I did. Like, right now, that's why I say I'm talking too much because people aren't going to feel it like I feel it. They're not going to, like, feel what I've been feeling since I was a child. They're not going to feel it. But I've been, I've been feeling this way since a child. I've been having old people, man, come over me telling me I'm anointed. Old people, bro, like. These old people, when they, you know, when they, I don't know if you ever had it happen to you, but they cry over you and they tell you you're going to be special one day and they tell you you got a future and you're anointed and you're chosen by God. I've had that happen to me multiple times. I've had people tell me I have spiritual gifts in me. Like, like, I mean, like, I, I know for a fact that, like, I know God didn't just do that for no reason, man. And in, and in my last fight definitely made me question God, like, God, how, how, how can you let me go in there and glorify your name like that and fail in front of the world, in front of all these people that don't believe you? And he told me, he put it in my spirit to just work harder, work harder, and to just believe bigger. And when I get in there, I got to pour my heart out every time. So that's, what, that's why my mindset has changed. That's why I'm going to be a lot more aggressive in this fight. But it's going to be measured aggression. I'm not going to come forward like that big dude. He just fought last. I'm not doing that shit, bro. Like, I'm not giving you a takedown. I'm not going to give you anything in there. You're not getting nothing. 
So, you're not going in there just, you're not just gonna swing like just a swing. You're gonna actually be calculated yeah. and you know, like not just be a fucking. I'm idiot gonna be measured in my approach. I'm gonna be yeah. I'm gonna be calculated. I'm gonna be precise. I'm gonna be accurate in there. Like like where that other guy was just trying to swing. He was five eight. Like he was a short guy and he was just trying to swing and just touch Cody. And he did touch Cody quite a bit of time. But he didn't put him away. Arm punch. You can't do arm punches when you have a guy hurt. You gotta go. This guy gotta go for the kill. He goes to sleep. He goes to sleep. God will take care of him. Exactly, bro. Exactly. Exactly. What's exactly. your name again? Tommy. Tommy. I'm Trey, man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Trey. <laughs> All right, That's man. Uh, I mean, like this has been this has been awesome. I have a, I have a couple I have a couple questions left. Uh, and then we'll wrap this thing on up because okay. I know your wife's probably trying to get a hold of you. Um, so I know you flew for the first time this past year or when you went for the ultimate fighter, what was the first flight experience? Like, cause I had my first flight like a month ago. So, or a year ago. So I have the scary, same exact thing. It was, scary. it was scary. It was just scary. And it was, a, uh, it was surreal leaving my son behind for the ultimate fighter. And, uh, he was one month old when I left. So mainly it was the hardest thing to do was to leave my wife and son behind. That was that was the hardest thing to do, bro. But I'm glad I did it, and I'll do it again if I had to. But it sucked, bro. It was one of the worst feelings I felt leaving them and not having them taking my phone to show and not knowing who I'm fighting and not knowing when I'm fighting and not knowing like like where like the dates and not being able to listen to music and none of that. But if I had to do it again, I would. It would suck, but I would do it again. All for the end cause. I made it all the way to the end. I made it all the way to the finale. Like and and I and I went into I went in there into a fight that really could have been a draw, but I feel like I won. But it is what it is, man. I I uh, made it real far from that ultimate fighter and flying my first time on that plane. But that shit was crazy, man. Dude, my first now flight ever. Planes, no, what was going on? You go, you go, you go, you go, you go. You go. No, nah, you good. All right, I was like, the first time I ever flew, I was with someone who's flown before. They said I had, like, they're like, that was maybe the worst landing I ever had because the guy was like, we were like fucking turned like 180 degrees, like over and over again, like going back and it's forth. Turbulent. I was like, yeah, it was nuts. And I was like, this, this cannot be like flights every single time. Like, no, that was like the worst landing I've ever had. It was, it was awful. I felt terrible. That's how it is sometimes, man. That's how it is some of those, the uh, best. Yeah. That scares me, man. I, I don't like playing somewhat because if you get in a wreck, it's kind of like you're gone, you know? Mm-hmm. You have no control over it. It's not like driving where, like, you know, you feel like you have that instance of, like, I can control what's going on, but when you're flying, you, you can do is control. jump out with a parachute. Yeah, the only thing you can do is get out of there and jump out with a parachute. That's it. But I, uh, I'm ready, man. I'm ready. I feel good. I've, I've got to train with Douglas for this camp. I've got to train with Mike Graves, the former – the, I got to train. Mike Graves is the guy that fought uh, Usman in the finale. Took Usman's back. They had a really great fight. Almost almost beat him with that red naked choke. Um, but long story short, I've been training with him, Douglas, Cannoneer, uh, Anders. I've had, a, I've had a good camp. And every guy I went with, I've showed my skills. Every single one. Like, what the hell is he about to offer me that they that they can't. I, I mean, I'm just being real. Like, 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 what is he? What like? I'm just being real, bro. So I mean, I mean, I think I heard him. I, I think one of my friends told me that he said that he trains with better people than me, and he trains with freaking uh Dustin Jacoby, I think, freaking uh George somebody Petro, Georgia Petrosian, which it really is a legend, and he trains with uh. He trains with another guy too. That's like a like a like a journeyman in the UFC, but he's a really good journeyman. Uh, I don't know who it is, but Anthony it's Smith. N- Anthony Smith. Oh yeah, but has nothing on like the guys over like all the people you train with in Arizona. Nothing on those guys. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're like they're not like they're good fighters, but they're not like like on the top like rank system in the UFC. I mean, I gave Kenny like good work, man. Like. I, I had to give him looks up easy and I had to be explosive and like fight from the outside and kick his leg and like be explosive and jump like, 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 uh, like be technical. And, uh, and I did good. I, I hope Jared goes in there and does good. So this is going to be coming out after the fight. 
so what like what are you so yeah this is gonna be coming out next tuesday or so yeah a week from today uh what do what should we see out of jared then in this fight with izzy is he bringing anything different or are we gonna see him standing is he gonna try to make something more grappling? I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be dis- i'm not gonna be disrespectful to that man and put out what he's gonna do i'm not gonna do that but i will i will say that i will say that uh um, I think he's going to go out there and pour his heart out because he's 38. He he knows he's not getting no younger, and he knows that this title shot don't just come by every day. So I, I will say that I feel like he's going to shock Izzy with certain things that he does, and uh, I hope he does do great. Do I believe I can be champion and beat these guys too? Hell yeah. But am I going to go out to – like, if say Cannonier wins that belt, I'm not about to just go call him out and be a and be a dickhead and be fake and be like, hey, bro, I, I want to fight you next. Like, I mean, I, I damn sure will fight him, though, uh, later on in the future when the money makes sense. And But it feels kind of weird because he did just kind of mentor me so and, and, and teach me the game. So, you know. I feel like fight timeline, so I feel like by the time you get up there, he won't be there anymore. He'll probably be. Gone. That's what I'm thinking too. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking too. He's 38, so if he does win the belt, by the time I get to the title, like and stuff, like if he ain't, I don't know though, bro. He if he does his job correctly and I and I get there and he's still there, we. I mean, shoot, it's no disrespect. It's business. Uh, I love him, man. I have no hate toward him. I have no hate toward Izzy as well. All love, just the fight. I, I think I need. A, I think it's time to bring the belt back to the U.S. bro, the United States. We need more American champions. I think we only have Aljo. I think he's the only one right now. And they and they hate him, bro. Like America, <laughs> America hates um, black American fighters, bro. You're not. Like, I you're mean, not I kidding. mean, I'm just being. I'm just. Being no, honest, it's bro. real. No, no, no. I agree, 100. percent I'm with you, 100. percent They picked the Russian Weird. over Aljo. They picked the Russian, the white Russian yeah. over Aljo. The white Russian, but Russia, the all of Russia is behind him. Like, if he goes and pull up the Russia, they're all going to get out and, like, cheer. But Aljo gets out, they're all going to call him a faker, a bum, because the dude the dude took a knee and didn't get up after, like, taking an illegal knee. And my thing is, like, bro, like, I would have got my ass up and kept fighting, but, but the dude probably did really feel concussed. But it's, like, all – Black champions across all landscapes. If you look at Deontay Wilder, they hate him. If you look at Devin Haney, they hate him. And, and that's boxing. And if you look at uh, Tyron Woolley, they hated his guts. If you look at freaking uh, uh, the only American black fighter I say that they like is Bobby Green and Derek Lewis. Derek the Black Beast Lewis. I mean, because who can hate those two? You can't know? hate Derek Lewis. You can't hate, and Bobby you Green. Can, Gotta love can. Bobby. I'm just talking about all the champions, all the ones that are up there. They're all hated pretty, pretty And John bad. Jones, they always try, tried to bring down. They always tried to bring but down. I mean, they, like, God, they like DC. God, they, they, they like play. DC. Uh, they do like DC. But I was actually there when DC got inducted into the Hall of Fame. And, like, when he did, nobody like it's like nobody stood up and clapped. When it's like that whole building should have been on fire for DC, it's like nobody stood up like, oh, my God, DC's getting – getting this he deserves this it's like i was clapping for him but i looked around and everybody was like so but it's like it's like if mcgregor was getting i don't know bro we don't got to get into all this race shit but at the same time i feel like like i'm definitely not gonna bring it all into race and stuff but like i'm just spitting facts man they don't like black american fighters i'm gonna change that stereotype though hopefully they like me whenever i rise to the top but they damn sure they don't like me, bro. They don't like how much I talk about God. They don't like uh how much I speak into the future. They hate that shit. They cannot stand it. Some of them like my confidence, but some people feel like I'm a cocky guy and I'm a Jesus freak. And I am kind of a Jesus freak. Hey, there's nothing wrong with being a Jesus but freak. I got, every, I got every right to be a Jesus freak. I got every right to love God because God was with me when I was watching my mama get high, bro. Like he was with me when that when I when those dudes held straps out to me. Could have killed my black ass. He was with me. They weren't. They weren't. I've had gun I've been man. So at the end of the day, bro. I'm done trying to please people. I'm doing going in there to go win. 
for me, my family, and God. That's it. God damn right. Or gosh damn right. Gosh damn right. I got to cut. I got to. I see. Yeah, I'm, you're I'm good, also. You're good, bro. You're I'm... good, bro. I cut too. I cut <laughs> too. Like, Jesus Jesus literally died for people that, like, don't got all their their ducks in a row. Like, he got he, he died for the people that aren't perfect. They mess up, bro. I, I ain't feel looking like if, at you like, oh, this guy is a heathen. If I drop he a GD, God if I drop a goddamn it, that's a lot better than going out and like robbing or stealing or like uh, cheating Thank on you. somebody, things like that. There's a lot worse you can Thank do you. than dropping a, a GD. A lot worse, bro. A lot worse. There's a lot worse. But, uh, There's a lot worse. Thank you for calling me, man, and then get, let me get these things off my chest. Uh, definitely a long time, uh, a long, long overdue, and uh. Y'all have a pretty big platform, so hopefully y'all cut the highlights and show the good moments in this interview and stuff. And freaking, but it's all, it's like, let's let's keep doing it. And in the future, man, after this win, we have another interview and stuff. You're, let's do it. Don't, let's don't do be it. shocked. Don't be shocked when my Lord and Savior do it, though. Don't be shocked oh. when he when he brings my name to a level above all other names in my division. Don't be shocked when my King do does it for me, bro. With a mom on dope, with a father in prison, it don't matter where I came from. I'm gonna be successful. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be the best. But don't be shocked when my Lord and Savior works in my life, bro. No matter how imperfect I am, I serve a perfect God, and He's gonna flow through me every time I step in there, and I'm gonna win. So I ain't gonna say whatever questions you got, bro. Ask, ask me. I done said what I needed to say. I, has been said. I feel like more than enough has been said. Uh, whatever questions you have, I'm gonna just answer them at this point, and I'm gonna just like refrain from saying much else because I've been like for a while wanting to have a good interview with like a like good platform and stuff. Because I've been wanting to get these things off my chest, but now that they're off my chest, I'm gonna let you take over the interview completely. No, we're good, dude. We've pretty much gone over everything. Um, pretty much. There's only one more thing I had. And it kind of goes back to your childhood a little bit. Um, don't want to glorify too much of the childhood fighting, but when was the first time you actually like knocked someone out cold? Um, the first time I ever knocked somebody out cold, man, it's been so many instances, bro. Like that, I fought. Uh, I I was probably about like fifteen when I like hit this kid. I didn't knock him out cold, but I like hit him with a right hand to like sent him flying across the room and like he would he got back up and now he hit him with another right hand and like he could not take the power at all he would just fall and stumble and I remember like fighting this one kid I was like 15 years old and I rushed him and I blitzed him so hard that like his braces were sticking to his gums he was this big muscular football player and I like had knots all on his head like but my first first time knocking somebody out was like seven years ago six seven years ago at, at the old ATT I was going against this guy and uh I barely it seemed like I barely hit him with a one two and like he just started stumbling all over the place and I had this other guy where I like threw a roundhouse and I kicked him in the head and like he he was out for like five minutes that was before my that was before my my pro debut and and uh Last but not least, when I first started training at 17, I would I rocked a lot of people. I would rock people, and I actually ended up getting kicked out of my gym because I just didn't know my own strength, and I was hurting people by accident, and I was a liability to the gym at the time because I was competitive, and I didn't want nobody to get the better of me, and I, I would rock people in there. Now I got Douglas to go back hard with me. So, I mean, yeah, man, that's that's it. That's my first time. Right before my pro debut when I was about 20 years old. No, no I was like 22 years old. And I and I landed the, the most flush head kick on the guy. And he was a good kickboxer. He was actually undefeated as a kickboxer. Uh, I, I do believe. And, and he never fought again after that sparring session. Wow. 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 I mean, I'm not, I'm not bragging on that by any means. But, I mean, shit. It, it happened, man, and uh, I hate it for the guy, but it yeah. happened. Yeah. This happens just a just a fight game. All right, man, yeah. that's what I have for you. So, if there's anyone else you want to give some shout outs to, um, go ahead.
go on ahead and then we'll wrap this thing up. Man, I want to thank American Top Team, Team Lima, Douglas Lima, uh, and Diego Lima, the founders of it, man. That, that, that gym is probably the best gym on the planet. Uh, they mentored me, showed me the way, and uh, I'm about to put the gym on the map in a huge way. Shout out to my boy Cody Darden going in there, getting that knockout, representing Team Lima the right way. Uh, I'm next. It's time for me to go in there and make a statement as well. Cause we the winning team, baby. We the best. I've been told that boy, yeah, right, a good, good power in his right hand. Uh, lastly, but not least, I, I, I want to thank uh, Barbara at the Phoenix Triad Mechanical. Uh, uh, mechanical. Uh, y'all better hit up Triad because it's hot as hell outside, and he got the best heat and he got the best air conditioners in the southeast. And also, uh, Barbara at the Phoenix. I want to go ahead and give him some glory too. Um, he helped my knee. He helped me get past all these knee injuries and all the pain in my knee. And without him, man, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here healthy to be able to fight right now. Um, I want to thank Eat Clean, bro, supplying me with the best meals. I want to thank Bully X Kennels for giving me my boy Jax and helping me start off the kennel that I'm about to start. Um, and lastly but not least, I want to thank um, Jason Ferguson, Ferguson Law Firm. I want to thank Jason Ferguson, Ferguson Law Firm, the best lawyer in the world. He's one of the best lawyers in the world, and uh, he'll take care of you if you need him. And uh, lastly but not least, lastly but not least, I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for waking me up this morning and putting this dream in my heart. And I want to thank him for, for my brother that interviewed me today, and I want to thank you for his life and for the, the great future that you're going to provide for me and him. That's it. That's all I want to thank. All right, man. Appreciate you coming on. All right. Love talk, chatting it up with Trey Sean. Uh, we got our UC Vegas uh, 58 preview. Let's go ahead and dive on into it. Cue the music. Let's get on into this. We kick off the card with. Oh, my God. Ronnie. Lawrence for Saeed Yushkabob. Fuck his last name. Him this way last time. Good luck to Fitzy and the boys this weekend saying that name for three rounds as Oh my god, Ron Slam Saeed Kahib Kebab Shkabash to the mat in between cross sniffs for 15 minutes. We move on to Kennedy and Boohoo and Carl Robeson, who's coming off being Ray Rice by Khalil Roundtree. And Boohoo will show up and absorb every punch, hoping Robeson will gas himself out. But surprise, surprise, motherfucker, Carl can grapple as he bounces back inside the distance with a well balanced onslaught. Onama. So I'm spread. <laughs> I'm stupid. The violence continues into the middleweight division as God's enlightenment. Trey Sean Gore will enlighten Cody Brundage with the body and blood of Jesus Christ inside the octagon. May peace be with you, Cody. And peace be with your chin when Trey Sean connects. The road to three begins this weekend. And we head into our first female fight of the night with uh, the other Shevchenko taking on the borderline 500 fighter, Courtney Casey. We will be welcoming in Joe Martinez inside the Yachtdown this week to announce this split decision. And we move on to a fan favorite and tough veteran, Ricky Jersios, against, yes, he's Canadian, Aiman Zahabi. I hope I said that right. Jersios <laughs> may have some of the worst defense you'll see in the UFC, but his fans won't tell you that. And God damn it, he can take a punch. This is fight of the night caliber, and it's not for being high level. And we move on to two-face Michael Johnson as he scores up against third world Alex Volkanovsky, Jamie Malarkey. Coming off a violent knockout, our expectations back up. Johnson will more than likely fall into some crazy ass knee bar that Malarkley will fail into. This gets our violence guaranteed. And we move on to the featured women's fight as Amanda loses his husband, wife, or not really sure who wears the pants in this relationship. Nina Nunes squares off against former prospect Cynthia Cavillo. Can Nunes be the only one in the family with UFC win in the 2002? Or does Calvillo look to bounce back her promising days? I don't know. I'll be at the liquor store. He's the heavier, a little less pretty Sam Alvey. It's Chase Sherman who has stumbled his way up to a main card slot against Jared Vendera. The UFC delivers another low-level heavyweight fight with both jobs on the line. Trademark. War Sherman, baby. Don't put the fence on the line for this one. Trademark. This one's gonna suck. After the U.S. warned all day of a full-scale Russian invasion of Brazil, that it was imminent, Vladimir Putin has just addressed the Russian people moments ago, announcing what Putin called the start of a military special operation, in his words, to demilitarize Brazil. Never bet against an Omega Medal. 
And we move on to the co-main event of the evening as Heisenberg Kaya Baralo continues to move up the rankings despite the UFC's best efforts to keep him down as he fights Armand Peter Jan, <laughs> who is no pushover coming off a victory of a Robocop Gregory Rodriguez. But Kaya ain't no 12. He'll actually represent his country with pride and choke on Armand. That's the fight. Moves on. And now, the main event of the evening, and we got a gatekeeping as Rafael Dos Nachos and Rafa Morbius Fazeev square off inside the octagon. Every lightweight main event since 2019 has been a finish or a fight of the night, and that won't stop now as Fazeev either clips the ever durable RDA and shocks the world, or RDA chokes the fucking piss out of Rafael Fazeev as the fight goes down the road. It will be a bar burner, and that is UFC Vegas 58. That's uh, that's what we got, man. I'm super fucking cold in terms of betting, so I'm not even going to try to give you guys stuff, uh, even though you probably love fading me. Uh, I am a dipshit. I am a dummy. I openly admit that. I'm just here to have some fun. That's why we do these and not like gambling previews. So uh, uh, without further ado, let's go on into Harrison and I. We talk a little UFC 276, uh, and we got our uh, winners and losers. Well, there's our UFC Vegas preview. Uh, we were just checking the stats. The front of the program parlay. Uh curse has not died yet well actually technically sort of ray cooper won so you can kind of take that as a big w he knocked the guy out in like 10 seconds so that was pretty sick so maybe the curse is broken hopefully trey sean can break that curse in the ufc uh before we had the ufc long island where we got a bunch of friends of the program on there uh so uh, let's go on in I mean, a big big world this big 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 weekend in the ufc uh with the ufc 276 uh as i said earlier but like who cares? It's kind of a shitty card, for being honest. wasn't that great. I don't know if you were even able to watch it, Harry. It was not that great. Uh, I was at work. Yeah, uh, I was... saw that Adesanya had pulled it off. And Did you see him getting was... mad at Chris Pratt? You got mad at Chris Pratt? Because Chris Pratt was like, dude, you're, you're like talking, you like came out the Undertaker urn and and he just kind of point fought for five rounds, and he's like, he can't, he can't <laughs> criticize me. Blah 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 blah. Chris Pratt takes a high ground. Like, you know what? Yeah, I hear people sh- uh, criticize me in my movies, and I don't like it either. And he's taking wow. the high ground, so Izzy's probably going to come out and call him a fucking pussy for apologizing, or I don't know. Izzy's, uh, like that. I, I don't know what's going on with them right now, but he's kind of becoming a, a villain. He's becoming a heel almost. I don't know if he's embracing it, but he's becoming almost like a heel. Um, I mean, if you, if you walk that to the Undertaker theme, who did have one of the greatest heel runs in WWE history, maybe he is fully embracing it. Like, maybe, maybe that's the real story here. He's really let's, just look, becoming, let's look deep into this. Yeah, I think we like, should really do a deep dive into it. Well, I, I, I mean, I if, if, if you're, I know his are a lot of signers of striker, but I don't, I mean, like Alex Perez stra- grappling is dog shit. Sean Strickland, idiot for not grappling. I think me and a lot of other people got burned on that. Uh, mm. I, I have a very strong feeling is he's just going to grapple fuck Alex Pereira to death, uh, even though he's not a grappler. He's a better grappler than anyone else he's faced other than, than Sean Strickland, who uh, is a fucking idiot. Let's just be blunt yeah. and honest. He had such a disgusting grappling advantage and decided he was going to stand up there and strike with him. And I know for a fact he wasn't going to do it later because he's like, yeah, I was pretty confident in my striking until, uh, you know, he got me. And it's just like, bro, yeah. what are you doing? What are you doing? Great job. Yeah, fucking great idiot. job. Fucking yeah. Continue. Maybe it really isn't his chick. Maybe he's just as fucking stupid. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, that's what we got for that. I mean, obviously, you got uh, there is no PFL this week, but for, unfortunately, Ray Cooper didn't make the, uh, the playoff. But Rob Wilkinson, number one seed, no big deal. Let's, let's go, go, Rob. Let's go, Rob. And then, uh, yeah, all right, let's move on to our winners and losers of the week. Uh, I'll start with my winner. I think this is a winner for everyone's patriotism. So, Joey Chestnut uh, won the hot dog eating challenge. Not only did he do that, this is the most patriotistic thing in the world. Joey Chestnut just guzzling down 60 plus glitties. And took down a terrorist. And then he won the hot dog eating contest. All while on a 20 kill, he's taking down a terrorist. Uh, and apparently he had the flu too as well. Um, so patriotism at all time high on the 4th of July. Minus the whole fact that there was another shooting in Chicago. That's I guess you can call that also winning for patriotism. Because you can keep your <laughs> guns. About <laughs> the most American thing that could happen. I, I mean, that was a pretty fucking American day. So uh, shout out patriotism for giving us all ends of the spectrum uh, on yeah. the 4th of July. Harrison, your first winner of the weekend. My first winner of the week goes to the man who's extended June seven days, Cal Schwarber, who's been hitting dingers like there's literally no tomorrow. I mean, he's hit four in the last two games, two per game. He's hit the most in the MLB since the beginning of the month of June, and he's the leading candidate for NL MVP. Like, and he's a Hoosier. And Wait, Schwarber's said, in the leading candidate for MVP? I think he's one of the leading candidates for MVP right now because no he's hit like way. 
He's hit like twenty nine dingers so far this season. Tied for tied with Judge for most in the MLB. That's actually kind of wild. That is wild. Love yeah. Shorbo. Love Shorbo. Hope he can keep it up. I don't know if he's gonna well, call him a MVP, but love me some Schwarber. He's playing out of his goddamn mind right now. And he said that the best thing that ever happened to him was going to IU. So like, no big shout deal. out Hoosier. Yeah, no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> um, <it> takes, <laughs> takes us to our first loser. My first loser. Um, man, this is tough. So uh, we talked about last week the conference realignment. Uh, I think the biggest loser, if he's even heard about it yet, if he's not tripping on shrimps, is Bill Walton. Uh, Bill Walton, mm. massive loser. The conference of champions falling apart. Uh, UCLA joining the Big Ten. Big Ten is now officially the conference of champions. The Pac-12 is dismantled, destroyed. Joining the Big 12, apparently they're doing something with ACC. I don't know whoever. Uh, if Bill Walton uh, either hasn't already forgotten already that he's been told or if he's found out and now he's just kind of thinking, pondering it. Uh, Bill Walton, uh, he's got to be feeling pretty shitty right now because the conference yeah. of champions, his conference – it's falling apart, but it would be classic if we get a UCLA IU game at UCLA called by Bill Walton, but it's in the Big Ten. Fantastic! Um, so I can't wait. I to, need it. Inject it. Inject it. Into Eastern my the East time zone. Everyone in the Midwest Ooh. needs more Bill Walton, and we're about to get it. The spin zone. That's the best part about the conference realignment is we are going to be forced Easily. to listen to Bill Walton. If you don't, if you if you if you want to listen to Bill Walton, you're thinking you're going to get some high class, high quality commentating. No, you're in for a fucking ride though, and it's so entertaining. <laughs> it, it's literally a trip. He, literally, because you should be tripping shrooms with him too. Yeah. He's probably microdosing before every call, yeah. every call. He's off his ass, and he's just sitting out there. And that is Trace Jackson Davis, the snakes come out of his skin. <laughs> he's, just fucking, uh, he's just fucking he's, crazy. I love him. I love him. I love Bill Walton. Everyone needs to embrace Bill Walton. So fun. I don't like how he gets slandered on the internet. He's the best. He's the best. He's the best. You're, you're not. You need to. You're not going to get fucking Gus Johnson out of Bill Walton. You're going to get Bill Walton like Trace Jackson Davis. Well, again, we we'll use more IU terms. Uh, goes up and fucking yams on uh, someone like Tiger Campbell, and be like, he's like, Jason is a. Am I missing some buttons here? Just while there's like fucking oops and shit going on, he just he just goes on these little tangents like that. Maybe I'll go on a tangent about the the Grateful Dead. I don't know. You, there's oh, so many yeah. different things you can just get him on little tangents, or he just gets distracted. Um, love me, Bill Walton. Love me some Bill Walton. Harrison, your first. It's the best. My first loser is Drew Locke because oh. dude caught an absolute stray last week. He was probably just chilling at his house, you know, cracking open a few beers, enjoying his off season, doing whatever. Opens up his Twitter and sees that the official U.S. Open Twitter account roasted him to hell and back. Um, to, so set the scene. The ESPN tweeted out uh, Twitter account tweeted accounts uh, out a video from Wimbledon, and some Seahawks fan replied, it "Doesn't matter. Not a real sport. Whatever." True facts. And U.S. Facts. Open shoots back. <laughs> Not a not a sport says the person about to watch seventeen games of Drew Locke at quarterback. Like Jesus Christ, what what did Drew Lock do? What a ricochet the man! Just thing. He, he rapped along uh, along with a uh, fuck. What, what song is it? Pretty presumptuous uh, too to think that he's going to be starting over uh, future Hall of Famer Geno Smith. Like that's yeah, exactly. Geno's going to be starting now. Uh, Geno's the fucking man. Actually, like, not, not even bullshitting. I thought when Geno started, he didn't look that bad. I don't think he looked that bad. And uh, to be he's honest, been solid. He's he's like, been solid. He also was in terrible situations, but this is the best yeah. weapons he's had. He's not with the Jets anymore, which helps a lot. Uh, and also, I think Russell Wilson's a little overrated. We'll, we'll dive into that in the NFL season. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a lot yeah, of ricochet wait. shots at the NFL this week, especially not even just with that, but also with uh, them. They're like, like guys keep talking about how they just can't work for football. And then it's just all just the images of like punt, 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 turnover on downs, punt, punt, punt. Yeah. Fuck off. Enjoy the beauty of the game. At least you get to see people get hit. You get to see people yeah. just fucking drill each other. You get to see quarterbacks make terrible throws. What else is there? It's Bears football. It's fantastic. Actually, just and you can't anymore. tell me that that uh, that punter from San Diego State, whatever his name is, the one who just got drafted. You electric. can't tell me that's not electric. Yeah. If, you, if, you if you're not cheering for fucking eighty yard bombs, man, you don't appreciate. Come football. on, it's so fun. Uh, going on to our next winner, I know I've already gave him a medal. It's Brian Windhorse. Um, I know I Dog. said this last show, but I need to give him enough credit before I just shit down his throat again here soon. Um, congrats on getting the Gobert trade. We're not trading him like fucking Prime Wodge. Uh, let's chill out a little bit. Uh, he, he's had a lot of terrible takes, a lot of terrible information. Uh, maybe he's in his prime. Maybe he's entering his prime. Maybe he's the new Wodge. Maybe we all thought Shams is the new Wodge, and then Windhorse comes out of nowhere. But uh, 
from the past experience. Well, that's it. I don't expect Brian Windhorst to really be the, I don't think he's the next watch. Um, I think we need to chill out because he's going to say some shit about how the Lakers have a great package for Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. Uh, I'm not over that. I, I know we talked about the trade that could have happened. Uh, I don't take back that slander because uh, the Lakers would never do that. Um, yep. It would be kind of fun though. Kyrie Irving and LeBron back together and then Russ and KD back together. A lot of, uh, a lot of potential funny things, you know, um, a lot so, of yeah. meme potential. Before I should be before I shoot down Brian one horse tr- sh- uh, throat more, Harrison, uh, your winner, your last winner. My winner goes to the T Wolves because they actually Whoa! held their ground. They held their ground and stood solid in the face of a ridiculous trade offer thrown their way. Because apparently the Nets asked them for Cat, Ant Man, and four picks for Kevin Durant. And I'm going to do something, of saying, I'm like, I've never done before. I'm revoking this winner. The Timberwolves gave up six first round picks for Rudy Gobert. <laughs> that's also true. <laughs> we I can't. Mean, they didn't win anything. Come on. I know they, they, they held their ground. They held their ground to they say no to down, Kevin Durant. It, this but... is more like a. This is more like a neutral. It's a neutral no. one. Oh man, this because is at bad. least they I... didn't. They didn't do two stupid ass trades this week. They did one momentously horrendous one, which just stupid as all hell. But they 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 held their ground on this one. So they also fucked over. They fucked over Kevin Durant because what can you get for Kevin Durant at this point? If if Rudy Gobert's were six first round picks and a bunch of role players, that's true. What's Kevin Durant worth like the, the trade market true. just got completely fucked. It's like when Deshaun Watson got that deal from the Browns. Yeah, this guy with who's a who's a uh, chronic not chronic. He has a problem. He just has twenty six cases. Serial. That's where I'm looking. He's a serial sexual assaulter. He has a problem. He has twenty six cases, twenty five, whatever. I don't know. I lose count. Uh, he gets like two hundred sixty million dollars guaranteed. That's fucking yeah. absurd. That's and so now you have good market. guys like Josh Allen, Pat. Well, Pat Mahomes already signed his deal, but like you yeah, got yeah, Kyler, Mahomes, Kyler Murray. You got a bunch of other guys who are just you know you need to pay them. And the fact that the serial predator got as much money as he did mm-hmm. is like. That makes that's all these other teams in terrible situations. Terrible situations. Well, and now they don't even have a backup for the eventual suspension. That, oh, they got Jacoby. Uh, Friend of the program, Jacoby. Oh, J- Jacoby went to – I didn't realize that. Yeah, he signed there. Allegedly, I, pretty, I read some stuff where pretty much he went there just so uh, they told him he was going to start for four weeks minimum. And then they would trade okay. him after the first couple weeks of the season, after once Deshaun came back. But that's not happening. Well, Deshaun, the, because, uh, Deshaun Watson's gone for a year. I mean, yeah, just Deshaun's gone for a year, and Jacoby can prove himself and just come out there and ball out. By the way, most shocking thing of the weekend was the NFL not dropping a, fu- a fucking bomb. They are notorious every every Fourth of July weekend. They drop a bomb, and this was Something's the perfect time to unleash yep. the Deshaun Watson bomb. They didn't do it. I don't know. Usually they press the button. They didn't press the button this week. Um, I don't know what they're. I don't, they gotta announce that stuff soon. They gotta drop this bombshell here soon. Maybe they're waiting for Kevin Durant to get traded, and then they're gonna like release the Deshaun Watson thing right after. Maybe they gotta. They gotta wait news. for. Yeah, they gotta wait for the attention to be on the NBA so they can steal it right back with a big bomb. Well, they also want to kind of slide it underneath a little bit, like, oh, look at all this. Deshaun Watson spent for the year or indefinitely. Um, yeah, 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 indefinitely. Yeah. 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 Uh, or fuck. I mean, it might even come tomorrow. They it's like Fridays. Fridays are the news dump days for them because then everyone talks about it all weekend. And, I don't know. They're geniuses. Uh, I'm gonna go into my. Yeah, last they know how to spin something for uh, to make sure they get the most publicity possible. Yeah, they're the money makers. Uh, let's go to my last loser, James Cross. Um, so for those unaware, he he trains the price. He's a uh, price bunches coach, trainer, all that other kind of stuff. They're all Arkansas guys so in that little area. He's on Arkansas. Cross is in St. Louis, but they're all in the same kind of general area. And so they're all at James Cross's house and Bryce Mitchell decides to get up and go into James's room. Uh, and he just is gone for like three hours. And he's like, what the fuck's he doing in my room? Opens the door. Bryce has passed out of sleep. And he finds out that Bryce went in there to jerk off. He came on the floor, cleaned the floor with his socks that were actually James Krause's socks. Uh, and then went to sleep still wearing those socks. And he thought that was completely normal. So, uh, loser is James Cross, Krause, because he lost two socks. Uh, and Jim Bryce Mitchell sh- literally uh, came on his floor. <laughs> so, uh, if you ever wondered if Bryce Mitchell is a stick, a shtick, or uh, really not like that knowledgeable, just know, just know he jerked off in someone's bedroom, wiped it up with his own socks, and slept in those socks. 
So uh, <laughs> I'm, I, don't, I don't want to question anyone's in like you know their IQ or anything, but if you hear him say anything about guns or masks or anything like that, just know that's maybe, the guy you're listening to. Maybe keep to. that in the back of your mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just so you know, whenever whenever you take everything he says, you're like, oh, what a smart guy. He jerked off on the floor and used his friend's socks to clean it up and then slept in those socks. Um, Jesus fucking Christ. So shout out to that gun thing <laughs> from a while back. Uh, Harrison, your last loser. I don't think anything I could say will ever top that. Well, I got but, one. Um, I got one. Right? I, got, I, have an, I have one that's better than that once you're done. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to go with Manchester United because it looks like they're going to lose Ronaldo to Chelsea and another one of their transfer targets at the Chelsea. But Jesus Christ, let's let's dive into what you think would be worse than that because oh, yeah, well, that's uh, wild. Over the past weekend, uh, if I were to tell you, like, hey, if you if you were to think of like a tattoo of what like a Joe Rogan listener or Joe Rogan think would be cool, just just think in your head, what would that tattoo be? Why don't you ask Aaron Rodgers? Because he got me with the one yeah. of the weirdest, stupidest tattoos. Um, the, the slight, the, that, he, that is a ridiculous tattoo. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. And I, I've said this before. If I wasn't from, if I was, if he wasn't the Green Bay Packer uh, quarterback, I think the slander on Aaron Rodgers would be like tripled. If he was playing Absolutely. for, let's, let's say he was playing for like uh, the Texans or the Jaguars or some, you know, team in like not the best market not like historically great team he would be shit on all the time it's just the fact that he's in chicago mm-hmm. even though he does get shit on a little bit um i mean it's just i can't stand him anymore i used to like aaron Rodgers. i can't stand his shit i mean maybe his family was normal and he just fucking hated yeah. them because they were so normal like at least patrick mahomes he he hates his family but he keeps it under the wraps he fucking hates his brother well actually he loves his brother but you know not like the yeah. cool way um he, he sticks mm-hmm. with them. So maybe Aaron Rodgers, like, you guys, what do you mean you guys don't believe in the lions and the sun and how the moon switches sides of the earth to yeah, determine your great. astrology sign? Maybe he's, maybe he's just a fucking sus ass. He just doesn't like his family because they're normal. Well, have you ever thought, thought about that? We, I, this is something that nobody's ever talked about. Like, maybe the, the family's just been normal the whole time. Maybe, maybe we're on to something there. I like, think we're on to something. I think, I, think we are, I think we're. I think we're. I think we're about to become an anti weird ass motherfucker. I'm becoming an anti Aaron Rodgers podcast. Uh, yeah. Never thought I'd see the day. Someone needs to take him down a few bags. Justin Fields. Justin Definitely Fields won't be Kirk Cousins. Over. Definitely won't be cut Kirk Cousins. No. no, he's Jared Goff. Oh, I wish Dan Motor City Dan Campbell might take his kneecaps though. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that would be amazing. Can you imagine next game between the Lions and Packers just? Oh, he's coming out for Aaron Rodgers with a crowbar. Uh, <laughs> Davis unleash a fucking lion on him. I don't know, dude. They're, I, I can't stand Aaron Rodgers. All right. Um, <laughs> do you have any shout outs before we wrap this thing up? No, I'm all chilling. All right. Well, I'm going to give a shout out uh, to friends of the program. I'm sorry. You guys are cursed by this show. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I do think the friend of the program matchup is no longer a friend of the program matchup. I think it's just all pro Ricky, which, by the way, Ricky Simone. Next Tuesday, no big deal. Great interview. Always love talking to him. And then we also got mm-hmm. uh, we have Bruce Buffer coming on the show. So if you guys got any yeah. questions for Bruce Buffer next week, uh, shoot us your messages, and we'll be sure to get those up. Uh, we'll do our first ever f- fan questions. So give me some stupid ones, some good ones. Give me some stuff uh, that'll make Bruce uh, open up a little bit. You know, you know. Uh, all right, man. Harrison, anything else before we wrap this thing up? I'm all good. All right. See you guys Tuesday. Ricky Simone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around with me all the way to the end. Uh, I just want to once again thank the sponsor of the show, Living.Fit. If you're looking to better yourself, make sure you go to download the app or visit the website, Living.Fit today.